So we talked about spectrum planning and that helps us coordinate our wireless microphones around external interference, meaning RF energy that comes from outside our church that we don't want to have to deal with like TV stations. But we also have to coordinate our wireless microphone frequencies to be compatible with each other. So the first rule to think about with wireless microphones is never operate two mics on the same channel. I'm going to mute my body pack system and talk on a handheld system. Now I'm on a handheld system and it probably sounds funny to you right now because both of these transmitters are on the same frequency. Now when both transmitters are on the same frequency, it doesn't fail, it just sounds really, really bad. And that's just because that won't work. So I'm back on the body pack system. So that's the first rule. So we know that with two wireless microphones, it's pretty simple. We use two frequencies and we're done. As soon as we had a, add a third or a fourth or more wireless microphones to the mix, we've got to think about intermodulation interference. And that's a big word. It has to do with what happens when wireless microphone frequencies interact with each other. Intermodulation simply means that multiple transmitters and receivers create additional energy on other frequencies than their own wireless frequencies. That's a little hard to understand without a visual, so watch this demo. Okay, so we've got two handheld transmitters turned on and they're six or seven feet apart from each other. And if you look in the center of the spectrum analyzer screen, you see a bar of energy for each one. They are tuned about one megahertz apart. And what we're gonna do to show what happens with intermodulation is we're gonna move these closer together. So as we move these two transmitters closer together, we'll notice above and below those two frequencies, other frequencies start to appear. They're getting higher in value. And now there's lots of frequencies uh, making noise. And if you notice, the spacing between our two microphone frequencies is exactly the spacing that's between every intermodulation product. So if we move them back apart a little bit, we see that the intermodulation products go way down. If we bring them back together again, we see that intermodulation products come right back up and they, they really represent, uh, if we look at that for a second, that with a third wireless microphone to be turned on, we've got to really think. We don't just have to avoid the first two frequencies, but we have to avoid all those other frequencies that represent essentially virtual transmitters, even though there's only two real transmitters on, we can think like there's over half a dozen transmitters turned on right now. So you can see because of the spacing that is repeated here between our carriers and our intermodulation frequencies, that means that the worst thing we can do is to repeat the interval between our first two frequencies. So for our third wireless microphone, if we go up again, one megahertz or down one megahertz, it's gonna land right on an intermodulation product and we're gonna have interference uh, really give us a hard time. So that's why repeating an interval identically up and down in frequency between multi-channel wireless systems is, is a really bad idea. And that's why a properly tuned system has different intervals between every pair of frequencies. So with multi-channel wireless systems, we know that when we add an additional wireless, we've got to be very careful where we put it in terms of frequency because there are already frequencies that we have to dodge that are called intermodulation products. You saw those on the analyzer screen as we moved transmitters closer together. And if you remember, there were intermodulation products above and below the two wireless carriers, and they were equally spaced in frequency, and they also diminished in intensity as they got farther out in frequency. What that means is for those two transmitters in that demo, the third transmitter we would turn on would have to be on some frequency other than all of those intermodulation products you saw. If we put our third transmitter on one of those intermodulation products, we risk interference as it moves around the stage because the intermodulation interference is fighting the third wireless microphone frequency. So you can imagine with three, four, five, six, or 10 or 12 or two dozen or more wireless microphones, the math to predict those intermodulation frequencies gets really intense, really quick. 
And literally in a typical church wireless system, we have hundreds or sometimes thousands of intermodulation frequencies that we have to think about. We can think of them as virtual transmitters because they're kind of like having another mic transmitter turned on on a frequency, even though you don't. But here's the good news. The major wireless manufacturers have already done all of this math and most modern wireless mic systems already have pre-coordinated channels in their memory ready to go. They're presets, they're already loaded. The math has been sorted out so that you don't have to do it. In the case of Sennheiser, we've got channels that are organized in banks. Uh, I think some of the other brands call them channels that are organized in groups or some other term, but the idea is these are coordinated channels where the intermodulation has already been avoided. Here you see a chart of 12 banks of channels. So in each bank column, the channels listed are fully compatible in terms of intermodulation interference. That means that in a multi-channel system in your church, you would want to use all channels from a single bank. You would never want to mix channels from multiple banks together because the intermodulation might cause interference.